Hello folks, today we're taking a first look at Neon Noodles gameplay. This is a kitchen automation puzzle game along the lines of Automachef, only with Autonauts style robot programming thrown in. And this comes out onto Steam Early Access on the 29th of November, and it's by Vivid Helix. So I guess the other way of looking at this game is overcooked for one player. Um, instead of people, you have programmable robots to do the work for you. And this is a nice early level where all we have to do is have one robot and make him make maple beans. So first of all, let's put some raw materials down and beans and probably do some maple syrup as well. Uh, and a cooking station and somewhere where we can sell the beans. And um, you can make these robots move around the level as much as you want, but there's no real point here. Let's program him. So, we need to pick up beans, so I'm basically using WASD here. Um, the program itself will appear in the bottom left for this robot. So all we've programmed it with so far is go uh, to the cooking station and retrieve something. Now we need him to turn left and put it into the pot. Now we need him to go and grab the maple syrup and then go back to the pot, put that in. Now if you look at the recipe in the top right, once we've actually put everything into the pot, we have to wait three times. So I'm going to press Q three times, and um, one, two, three. And then theoretically it should be a fully produced dish. So once again we go to the station by pressing the key towards it, turn, oh no, I've, I've, sold, um, I've turned the wrong way, I actually wanted to go up. So now we place that down onto the cell station, and then we press E and it'll automatically loop the program back to the start. Uh, so we've almost done this, um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll run the program. There we go. There, and he's going to keep on looping that until we've um, achieved the goal of five dishes. That's fine, although we did bug him up a little bit. So let's just go back and tweak it just so it's not so piss. Right, so I'm, I'm, I'm stepping through the program here. And because this is an early version, there's quite a few things that aren't in it, like quality of life stuff. Like, um, stepping through the program is a little sort of like annoying at first, because you have to start from the start each time. And let's take out the extra bits of turning that we didn't need. So, I think we just delete those two commands, and with any luck now, it'll go straight to that. Yes, so we've made it a bit more efficient. We've taken out the stupidity. And the two metrics that this current version has are cycles and program size. And generally, if you like um, improve your cycles, you might that might be at the expense of program size, uh, which is something that you'll see as we start to add more robots. So it's time to make some sushi. So for this, in the top right, we first need to boil some rice, then we need to chop some fish, then we need to combine the fish and the rice in a wrap, and then bung it out as sushi. So this one, well, uh, we probably need more than one robot, so let's place one down there. And we'll need to give him, let's see, rice and bowl, cookery pot there. So it'll take rice, put it in there, and then the, the finished rice will need to go onto the wrap station. Now, what we could do is then make him go off and chop some fish. We've only got one fish station, and then chopping, and then it'll take it to there, and then it'll take it to there. Um. It's not great, it's not very efficient. Let's see how we can program this. Dong. Dying. Wait. One. Take the finished rice, put it into the wrap. Fine. Then grab the fish, chop the fish. We need to do this. Oh no, it, it, it does it in one instruction, so we can then go down to the wrap. Then we need to do it again to actually do the, the wrapping. Then we need to do it again to pick it up. Uh, and then we need to sell it. And then go back to the start, so press E. Now this should work. It's not very it's not a very good program. Oh, bugger that up. No. So we do need to um, edit this program again. Let's just let's just see what went wrong there. He doesn't actually pick up the fish. Okay. So we need to step edit. We need to step forward to where you forgot to do that. He, not me. So we do actually need to give him another bump. You do actually need you, you, you slice it immediately, but then you need to pick it up again. Right, so that should have edited that correctly. So he puts that in there, puts that in there, puts that in the bowl. So that's fine. I mean, we can just finish that off. Um, we did okay. Um, that's 136 cycles and program size 28. So we've used 28 commands, but it took 136 cycles, which, hmm, not great. So what we should really do is use two robots. 
So let's start again. We'll put a robot down there. And this, we'll do the same again to start with. Um, rice. And that. And then probably let's put in a wrap station there. We'll make him so he starts off facing the rice. Otherwise we'll have to turn. Now if we had a second mod, um, kind of like um, next to here, so we can be doing the, the fish chopping at the same time as the rice boiling. That should get us where we need to be. So we'll need a cut station. And one of these lads will also, once it's finished, once I've once actually um, wrapped the sushi, they'll have to sell it. So if we put that there, try to make this as efficient as possible. I've played quite a few levels of this, and it does turn out that um, having the robots just stood there spinning around all over the place like this does seem to work better than having like robots marching around and moving things around. Apparently the developer's trying to make it so that the, the solutions aren't always based on these checkerboard things, because it's a bit obvious. So that's why that he's experimenting with metrics to um, you know, encourage people to solve things in more creative ways. But for now we're stuck with like cycles and program size. But this should program quite nicely now, so we'll get the rice, boil it up, wait one, pick it up, and put it onto there. And then, return to start, and then we'll probably need... Oh, that's how it, we'll, we'll stop there. We'll start with you. So now you need to pick up fish. Oh, we made it. Hang on, let's, let's start this again. Uh, we need to edit this. We need to make it so he's facing the fish to start with, ideally. Right, so pick up fish, chop the fish, pick up the fish, put it into the roll. Now, you can't do this because you'll have to wait for the other because the other the other guy won't have actually finished yet. So what I'll do is I'll put in I'll put in a few wait instructions uh, and then return to start. So the, going back to the first guy and editing this, we need to go step to the end, take out the return command, and now he'll need to continue wrapping the sushi like bump, and then pick it up and then sell it and then return to start. So that should work, however, um, robot number two has an extra instruction, has, has more instructions. So robot one number one needs to pad out your instructions by adding an extra space, which is Q. Right, let's watch. Oh, hang on. <laughs> there. Yeah, that's more like it. So in this case, we'll look at um, the number of cycles is much lower. Uh, the program size is, I think, also much is, is is also similar but lower. So yeah, I think we've done quite well there. We've improved things. Gentlemen, it's time to make some quiche. It's not the devil's food or anything. So this introduces a new mechanism called linking, where you can um, basically clone one's programming. So if we just set it out to do this and this and then loop it. So, he's basically going to do... he's going to do this. That's fine. Whatever. Now, this guy can be linked to him, so he'll do exactly the same movements. Like that. Which is all very well. So far, I haven't really found a use for it, though, in the current run of um, fairly limited, sort of, like, puzzles. Um, but, so we'll probably go back to a checkerboard to solve this one. So, this for this one, we'll need... everything will need to be based around an oven, because um, to actually make the quiche, we need to put in processed mushrooms and processed dough, as well as two raw ingredients. So we'll kind of need to split this between like three robots or four robots. So if we, if we start off by um, having... well, let's put in the oven. First of all, let's put the oven in there, because that's where things are going to happen. We'll also need somewhere to sell the quiche when it's finished, so that kind of like implies there's going to have to be a robot there. Now he'll be waiting around for quite a long time, because everyone else will be doing things, putting things into the oven or whatever. So he also needs to do something. Um, I could make him do the, uh, the, uh, the, the dough making, but that looks a bit complicated, so let's give him the mushroom duty. Chopping station there. So if we make this robot, essentially what he'll do is... Well, let's, let's start him off facing the right direction. That way. Programming to get the mushroom, chop the mushroom, pick it up, put it in the oven. And then he'll have to wait quite a long time. So I don't know how long that's going to be. Before retrieving the finished quiche from the oven and then selling it, return to start, and then finish that. Right, so he's doing that. So now we need the more complicated process 
of grabbing... Well, well, we'll see. We'll see how it all goes. Um, egg and milk. We'll need... We'll need probably need one person who just... Ooh. I wonder... I wonder. Hang on, let's... Let's get rid of the you and you. Maybe you should make you have the egg and milk. So that's going to have to be... That's going to completely change his programming. So let's restart. Right, so... This time, get the milk, put it in the oven. Get the egg, put it in the oven. Then wait for however long. Take the quiche out of the oven and then sell it. Return to start. And then sorted. So this may or may not be a good thing. We need someone to chop mushrooms. And we also need someone to make the dough. The trouble is the mushroom guy is going to be a bit kind of um, not really doing much. So let's start a district over here where someone's making... Hold on. What should we do with this? We need someone to make... Chop mushroom... Mushroom chopping goes there, maybe. But then, yeah. We're going to put them in there and they're going to have nothing to do. So maybe... The dough seems to be going to... Feels like it's going to take a long time as well. Hmm, okay. So we need... Flour and water. We need, we need a dough station. We're going to end up with the robots being all trapped, all trying to move into each other, aren't they? Hmm. Let's start this again. Right, so what we've got here now is... Robot 1's the same. Robot 2 is going to chop mushrooms and put it in the oven, and is also going to take the finished uh, dough and put it in the oven as well. So we'll need the actual dough maker down here. So that should be straightforward. I think... Let's program you to... Oh well, start that f facing the right direction. Also you. Right, so grab, chop, grab, put in, and then... I'm not quite sure how long this is going to take, but... Let's grab oven and return to start. And then we'll need kind of wait for however long. Finish. Number three, your should be quite straightforward. Edit that. Grab, put, grab, put. We need to work this twice. And then that's it. No. The trouble is now, we've got it so if you look at the programming, the uh, the dough retriever or the yeah, who's gonna put that in the oven, um is going to do it before it's actually done. So we need to go back into you. We need to step through the program. And we need to add in wait instructions to there. Go there and just remove those. Now, there's a, a time where everyone's waiting at the same time. So we can delete a few of these commands. Ooh, missed him. Delete that. And robot number three. Delete that. So just quickly check this out. Uh, makes the puts everything into the oven. Mushroom guy does the chopping, puts it in the oven. Dough maker sorts it out. May completely makes the dough, and then the the mushroom guy picks it up, puts that in the oven. And then um, guy number one has been waiting around, and then he can take things out of the oven and sell it. Right, that should be it. Let's let's have a go. Do do do. Oh yeah, that works perfectly. I seem to remember my previous solution to this um, was less efficient and used four robots. So I've only got it down to three now, so that's an improvement. Oh, hang on. Something's not right. We've only actually made one. They've gone buggered. I think I might have missed a return to start. Yeah, number three, look. Um, uh, number three guy never actually returns to his starting point. So let's just do a quick and cheeky edit there. Go to the end. Return to start. So yes, we just need to remove one command. Finish program. Now this time, it should work. This is looking better. Yep, yeah, there we go. We are making five quiche. Perfect. Oh, that's my yeah. That is actually my best yet because mine mine is the, like the olive coloured bar. So I think. <laughs> so I did ninety three cycles. Program size quite small. Yes. I have come up with a very good solution there. 
So the final level we'll look at in this um, uh, preview video is the Railbot one, where we first um, get to play around with Railbots. This thankfully um, gets rid of the whole checkerboard solution type thing by adding robots that can only move in uh, one particular way. Uh, we'll see what I mean. Um, at the moment I've got a setup where we're taking the chicken, chopping it and then putting it on the table. So let's program that. Pick up the chicken. Unfortunately, he's going to face in the same direction no matter what we do. So let's just remove all that programming. So what we could do is do that, chop it, and then put it there. Uh, return to start, finish, and run. I mean, that's just absurd. I mean, it cannot possibly be efficient, that. So we'll start from fresh. And we need to do a whole process here. We need to um, boil some rice, chop some chicken, chop some vegetables, and then th throw them all into a pan with some soy sauce to make the finished thing. So, if all the bots in this, because we can put as many bots in as we want, um, if all the bots in this can only move, like, sideways, or at least they can only face in one direction, that does suggest that the, uh, the final solution should be something that's in a line. So I don't know what the most efficient thing is here, but when I was playing around earlier, I think I came to the conclusion that, yeah, just put a long line of things with the robots on either side. So if we start with um, the pan, because that's where, essentially, the final cooking happens, and then we'll therefore, it makes kind of possible sense to place the cell place there, the, uh, the consumer. So we'll need to place the various um, production things. Okay, we'll start with um, a pan of rice over here, because that's quite straightforward. Oh, hang on, we've, I think we've missed out a thing here, haven't we? We haven't actually got any soy sauce. That's irritating. Uh, we'll need... That guy basically is going to just, I guess, put the soy sauce into the pan. And then pro maybe he'll do the cooking? Hmm. I'm a little concerned now. So, okay, I've moved the um, one robot along a bit and fiddled with the program to add the extra steps. So let's put in a soy sauce thing. And I'm wondering whether we should um, double up and put in the soy sauce into the pan as well. Well, I don't know. Not quite sure that's ne completely necessary. So let's try what happens if we program him to pick up the sauce and put it into the pan. And then presumably... Well, other people will, will need to put things into the pan as well. So let's move him out of the way. Uh, if he's going to be the guy... Or it, let's just move him back to there. Return to start. And then he'll need some padding as well. So let's see how that looks at the moment. Oh my god! They've all hit things at once. We can actually look at the program and you can actually tell where that happens. Because two and three attempt to use the pan at the same time, which is less than ideal all round, really. Everything else seems to be okay, though. So we need to jig it a little bit. So I think number three, robot, I'm going to basically pad your program out a little bit by putting in a space there. Oop, that's added an extra thing there. And then we'll also need to make sure that there's some padding there. So hopefully this time, it'll, this'll only work once because I haven't quite looped it properly. Ooh, everyone's still going there at once. Unfortunately now there's a, a collision between one and three. Ah. I think number one should actually do the, uh, the actual selling. You need to wait at the pan, and then you need to pick up the thing and sell it. And then go back to the start. And that's fine. The only trouble is now, everyone else needs some padding in their programming, otherwise things aren't going to work. So do that at the very end. Finish that. So this is the padding thing is a problem because you start to introduce a lot of waiting around. Uh, there's there's a few things that are designed to like possibly alleviate that. There's a command here which, um, essentially, after the first loop, um, you can actually set... You can see the program number for number three. You can actually set the point where it'll loop from in, f in future loops. So it'll only do the first part of the loop once, so therefore I don't really quite understand why that's actually useful, but apparently it is. Um, right, so we do actually need to change your programming, don't we? We need to actually add some padding. I'm sure there must be easy, better ways than this, using those other things. And number four. We need to edit that. And that should be it. Let's play. To coin a phrase. Yeah, there we go. That's all nicely done. 
How many cycles? 87 cycles, which is very good. Unfortunately, program size is 72, which is actually very bad. Apparently, you can do it in 51-ish, or thereabouts. I think that might be someone else's. Um, I think this might, I think this is a leaderboard. I haven't quite worked it out yet, but... Yeah, we can definitely improve the program size, because it's so padded. So there must be better ways of doing this. Possibly not just using one great big flat line, but it seems to work. But all that padding is quite problematic. Anyway, yeah, so this comes out, as I say, on Steam on 29th of November, so check it out um, if you want to automate your kitchen all over again. Uh, thanks for watching, do subscribe to the channel to be notified when new stuff goes live. Uh, check out my Patreon if you want to support the channel, keep us going, fi finding all the best games around. See you next time.